Hey everybody, I'm Eddie Starr, and this is the College of Rock and Roll Knowledge. Class is now in session. This is where the music and culture that shaped a generation live on, and my own path through the world of rock and roll. It's been five years since Informal Deviant's 13 Sexational Songs by my band Joybox was released. It came out on August 28th, 2015. So I thought I would talk a bit about the making of that record because it was very significant for me and at a very crucial time in my career. So let's go back to 1999. In March of that year, I had played a final show with my band, Eddie Star and the Zero Effect, at the Whiskey A Go Go on the Sunset Strip, and we had disbanded. And so I had a group of songs I was working on. Ambiguous was one of them, Sexation. Peep Show, and also the Ray Davies song, I'm Not Like Everybody Else, which was done by his band, The Kinks. I had seen uh, VH1 Storytellers a few years prior to that, and that really got me back into The Kinks, and I found the song, and the lyrics really resonated with me, so I really wanted to put my own mark on that song. So I would go down to Fortress Studios where my band had previously rehearsed Eddie Star and the Zero Effect and I would just grab whoever I could and try and work through the songs. And about the same time my band broke up, uh, this guy Bob Mars who was in a band called Church of Mars, his band had broken up. So... I had seen that band a lot, and I knew how talented he was. He was a great drummer. I knew he played multiple instruments. And so I invited him over to talk with, to initially, just like a meeting. I already knew him because at at the studio, a lot of times, our bands, you know, when there was a break, uh, he would come over and we'd smoke a cigarette together and chat. Also we'd go and see each other's shows. So I was friendly and uh, he came over and I gave him a cassette tape of me playing I'm Not Like Everybody Else. And he took it home. He uh, put together the arrangement and brought me back all the tracks that he had recorded at his home studio, and I really, really dug it. So I gave him Sexation and Ambiguous to work on, and also retained him as a producer for the project. And it was very, very cool. Everything was coming along great. I would basically go over to his home studio once a week and we would record. It was very different, though, than the way I had previously uh, done recording. Basically, it was all live, like the Generation Zero album. That was all live in the studio where we set up and we just played the song straight through, whereas this was much more of a layering process and a songwriting process. And a lot of the songs he would add a bridge or some specific arrangement that really made the song better. So it was really great. So after we got through those few initial songs that I had basically written... Uh, I started talking to Bob about, I said, well, you know, have you written anything? Do you have anything that's really cool that maybe we could work on together? So Bob had been in a band that had only utilized him as a drummer. And this was something, a direction he really wanted to go. And so he brought me some tracks 
and ideas and a lot of times we'd work on them together or I would go over to the studio and a couple of times we just worked on lyrics and we'd record them right then and uh was very very it was really like almost a very detailed song writing um how can you put it maybe like a workshop or something because it was a lot of fun it was very creative also Bob really helped me step outside of my environment and what I thought a record or what I could do on a song. For instance, on Manic Part One, I sang uh, the whole song low, and then he had me do the same track and sing along with the track, but sing it as high as I could. And then he combined both those tracks into one voice. And you can hear it in the album. It's, it sounds very different and it does. It doesn't sound like a back, like someone singing backup or there's multiple singers. It it seems like one voice. And so there were a lot of ideas like that, that came out during those sessions. And we also shared a lot of the same influences, like, uh, especially with the New York punk scene of the seventies, he was really into television and Richard Hell and the Ramones and as I was. I wasn't as into television, but of course I loved all the, you know, Ramones and New York Dolls and Iggy Pop, all that stuff. Uh, we were both into. So we had a real similar influence which made it really great to uh write with him as not only that but bob had he was into current stuff he stayed current whereas i did and i really get in my own world and that's where i stay sort of if i like something i really really like it if i don't then i'm not into it or if something doesn't sound the way I think a real rock and roll record should sound, then I would, I would say, ah, I don't want to pursue that idea. Whereas he was really good at drawing me out on what my strengths were as a vocalist and really honing my skills and also as, as a songwriter, because then I began to see the whole process different in terms of what I could do. And, um, uh, it pushed me. And I think that the record is a really great record that we did. It was funny because it was initially supposed to be a a, a solo album. And it was Bob's idea to do the project and make it a band. And um, he came up with the name Joybox. I wanted to call it Soda Punk, but he thought that that put us in more of just, oh, being a punk band, whereas we really were a rock and roll band, and we drew from all the subgenres of rock in terms of influence, and we recorded about 32 songs, and then we, of course, honed it down to the best 13 but it was quite a process and it took a long time. It was a lot of fun when we'd go over there and record and we'd have dinner. We'd talk about other ideas. Also, lyrically, I was going out to a lot of clubs with a lot of different types of people. So the lyrics on the album really do reflect that point of view. Some of the stuff in there is personal, but a lot of it is from me looking out into the world, these different worlds, the Hollywood club scene and just other strange people I knew and stuff. So anyway, I I, go give the record a listen. I think it's a really great record. It was, it's very significant in terms of what it, the experience gave me as a musician as a lyricist and uh, I think you'll really dig it if you're into rock and roll 
or like the ad we had at the time. Um, it was high powered sonic ear candy for rock for music junkies looking for their rock and roll fix. That was the line. So anyway, check it out. Thank you for liking, subscribing, clicking the bell, all that stuff. And I'll see you next time. Your fantasy. What you want it to be The darkness Will turn to light I'm your Dirty secret tonight Dream or not Then take a look inside Eddie Starr's College of Rock and Roll Knowledge is a production of Ton Up Incorporated Copyright 2020 Ton Up Incorporated.